creators, welcome to DaVinci Resolve, over 40 in 30, day 14. We're almost halfway there. Today, we're going to dive into chopping it up on the iPad. DaVinci Resolve for the iPad has been touted as one of the best editors available for the iPad. And again, it's absolutely free. Now on the iPad, I have not upgraded to the studio version yet. I wanted to do this first and then see if there was anything that I needed. But a lot of times when you're on the road and you just want to chop something up really, really quickly, the iPad is an awesome way to get this done. So the first thing we're going to do is let me just show you sort of what it looks like. Now I am using the uh, keypad here, the magic keys, and it is stated that it's probably best to use it with some sort of keypad. You don't have to buy this one. You can get Logitech or any other third party keypad. There's just some things that you want to do that has the keypad. And I will be also using the pencil that works really well. I've also heard that it helps if you connect the mouse to it. Um, I didn't pair my mouse. My other mouse is still in my travel bag. I legit just came off the plane to record this now. So let's go over and look at this from this shot. This is what the iPad looks like. So you're in here and you want to get started. First things that we should check is down in the bottom corner down here. We want to click on the uh, little cog wheel there and let me do this. I can show you where it's located down here on the cog wheel. So we want to do that, but let's go here and double check. We'll leave this at 1920 by 1080 for this particular case, but this thing is very performative on this M4 iPad. I can easily move around 4k and 8k footage. In this particular case, we're going to leave it like that. I do have my black magic cloud settings available to me. So I'm just going to set them. So I never forget what they are. I'm always going to want H.265 because the M4 chip just works better with that. And I won't really mess with much else here. The rest looks good gravy. I'll get and press save. So that's the only setting is like in here, basically setting up your timeline. And remember, you can do multiple timeline sizes in a single project, just so you remember that. Okay, now we're gonna click on the house to start ourselves a project. And let's just go new project here. And I'm not gonna save, don't save. And then we're gonna say iPad. I know how to spell demo. Okay, and then go ahead and press create. Now we got that there. So the first thing that you're gonna do is import media. And there's a couple ways to do that. Let me switch so you can see the overhead. You can normally just click right here in the middle to import media, but at the very top in about this area, I'm going to click on this particular guy, which is gonna load up this page here. So let me switch over and let you see what you see. So this basically brings up your iPod, iPad file system, right? So I'm gonna go to on my iPad and I'm gonna look into Blackmagic camera folder and then the media folder. And there I have some media there so I can check in the Deutsch, these medias and then say open and that should import them. I'm not gonna worry about changing the um, timeline right now just drop them in because just want to show you what's there and similar to the desktop version now you have your three clicks i wish there was a way you could see what i'm dragging on the ipad but we'll work with that in a second i'll flip back and forth between here so i can show you if i wanted to put this in I, as you see with this pencil you know the new pencil i can hover scroll so i'm scrolling through my clip i'm not even touching the ipad i literally just hang it right over top of it of course you can um can scroll actually i don't think you can you, you try to draw it literally wants to move so hover scrolling is cool that's one thing that's dope about having a new ipad and new pencil um but if i wanted to put this on the timeline i theoretically could just click this file and drag it down here to the timeline and it's just like you know what we're used to in our normal days down here in the bottom there is the hook to go backwards that's the undo and the redo in the trash can so we'll just undo that. I could also just select my clip or double tap it. And this would allow me to come in and find some endpoints, right? And then I could find out points, just like in the regular version of DaVinci Resolve. And option X on the keyboard gets rid of the in and out points, just like the regular version. So one of the things that has been mostly uh, talked about about the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve 
is it works very much like the desktop. Like it's almost full parity, understanding there's some things that an iPad can do that the desktop can do. But for the most part, everything is quite similar. So that's good. I find that a lot more promising than some of the other solutions that are out there working on the iPad. It's almost like you're working in a whole different mentality. So I think big ups to Blackmagic for doing that. So let's go back in. So again, I could also, you know, if I were to set an endpoint and an out point here and I wanted to drop this on the timeline, I have all of my buttons down here on the bottom that would do the same, like append that to the timeline, so forth, so on, et cetera. So let's um let's just put the whole clip first. I'm not this I'm not actually editing, I'm just showing you this. Ooh, do I have the iPad set to make noise when I'm doing that? I didn't check. Okay, good. <laughs> that would have been tragic because you wouldn't have heard the dang thing I said while I'm over here pressing buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop this on the timeline. And the way we scroll around here is you can drag on this ruler. You can also use the little jog situation up here. You have a jog that you can kind of work with back and forth, help you get your frames in. You can jump back and forth using the play and pause key. Of course, you can set it to do loopings, and this is for setting in and out points, right? So I'm gonna switch over just so you can see a better look of the whole process. So again, if I'm pressing this key here in the middle, I can use that as a jog. I can use the ruler to sort of drag back and forth. I can also just jump to the beginning, jump to the end. And over here, I can even click on this little arrow here I can even click on this little arrow here to begin and unembiggen the audio wave file. So I can even click and unclick this little arrow here to embiggen and unembiggen the audio waveform so that you can see. So if I wanted to start my little cut right here, this is where I feel that you're going to want to make some changes to your keyboard because normally what you would do is like long press here and get to your scissors. Uh, you could do, let me undo that and show you. You can do that with your finger. You can long press on the uh, indicator timeline marker. And then now I have that. And then I can press the delete to get rid of it that way. But we're going to set up some shortcut keys in a bit to show you that there's also over here, there is a scissor. So if we switch back, there's a scissor, which you see right here. I'm highlighting and unhighlighting. That would allow us to do that as well. And then this is your trim tool that would allow you to tighten it up, go back out, you know. So very much like regular DaVinci Resolve. You have the ability to leave markers. And if you press that down, you can see I just dropped the marker right here on the timeline. We're going to go ahead and undo that. And then let's say... If I'm in this position here, and again, this won't make too much of sense, but let's say I was here on this clip and I wanted to insert this as B-roll, like me talking about right here. I would just mark those endpoint and in the same position as on the computer, I would do place on top, right? So let me switch back and you can see you have your various controls here. I could do the place on top situation, which is that, and that puts it right on top. And again, I'm able to do some trimming, the same stuff that you do on the regular setup. Now, one thing that you're gonna notice, looking here at the very, very bottom of the screen, there's only two icons, and DaVinci Resolve comes with seven. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. We're going to comp compress, we're gonna press Command Option K, which brings up the keyboard adjustments, uh, customization, sorry. And you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom, making sure that you're on the all commands right here at the top where it says commands, you're gonna be on all commands, scroll all the way down to the bottom and right about here, you're gonna see show page. So we're gonna turn that down and then we wanna be able to add the cut page, the edit page, the fair light page and the media page. Um, I, you can add the other ones later, but I think for what most people need to cut on an iPad, that's it. You can add them all. That's all I'm going to add. So we're going to start with the media page and I'm going to click on the control key.
to notice that all of these control keys are basically blank, right? And so that's why with a keypad, I can press control one and set up my media page, bingo. And then I'm gonna click on the cut page and I want that to be control two. And I want my edit page to be control three. And I want my Fairlight page to be control four. Now I can come in here and change these at any given time, right? But there's that. That's going to make my job a heck of a lot easier. Um, I really don't want to psych myself out and start playing with color yet. But when I'm ready, I'll have the key already. So I'm going to go ahead and put control five on that. So now when I press save and close this, looking at the very bottom of the screen, if I press control one, I have my media page. If I press control two, that's going to give me this cut page. If I press control three, that's going to give me my edit page. And if I do control four, that's going to add my color page and control five is my Fairlight page. So I have it. I have my other pages there. You can go ahead and add the other two if you wish, but now I can work just like I'm working on my desktop with my various sections all the way built in. That is really cool. That is really cool. So we're gonna to stick to the cut page for this particular situation, because I think for most things that you're gonna do using the mobile, um, you're gonna have the control, the cut page is about what you need. Also remember that you can come in here and you can scale these uh, images. So let me bring out to the other page so you can see what we're doing. Right here on the side, there's a little hamburger menu. It's kind of finger grips. You can use that if you need to see more of the timeline. So you have that available to you there. Um, you also have, you know, the ability to see your source files. You can see your individual pieces. You can go timeline view. You also have the multicam view, view if we're doing something with multicam. So you can set that up, right? You're still able to use syncing capabilities there. If we needed to sync these clips, these clips were shot independently. So we can't really sync there. We have a full inspector situation. So if I click on the inspector here, let's go big so you can see what we're doing. I have the ability to adjust the sound levels here, uh, pan left and right. I can pitch, you know, the up and down, add a little EQ, click on the video tab here. I have the ability to zoom and angle, you know, the same things that you would normally do. Now let's step out of the inspector for a second. And I'm going to show you that right here in the middle, there's the menu that looks like lines with little balls on it. That's the tools menu, same as in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna click on that and you'll see, I have the ability to, you know, crop this image in. I can move it around like such. I have the ability to zoom it with this. I can up and down it with that. I have the ability to rock it on the X axis, rock it on the Y axis, even hit the rotate. I can hit the quan. So that's all super handy. And again, if you need to see more, just bring this down so you can see what you're doing. We can flip that bad boy and we can flip it that way. And then you can just reset everything, right? You also have your transitions right there. You have everything that you had in the other one. Speed ramping is here. Um, you even have the auto color situation. If we wanted to bless that with a little bit of weak color. You can press that. So everything is available right here in the iPad, just like you're working in the regular version of Resolve. I, it goes without saying, family, like I am very impressed by this. Look, we can even pop over here, click on the titles tab at the top. And then let's say we want to drop in the lower third. We can drag that bad boy, put it right there. I would have put it on an extra video line, but I have the lower third capability there. Hit the inspector so we can go and change things, right? This is a ALPAKA two liter flight. Right, there you go. Switch the font. I just realized on the iPad, I don't have my normal fonts installed. I have to go get a font program to put my normal fonts in because otherwise this is going to be tragic. We'll just leave it at Open Sans for now and then embiggen it, 
to bold, semi-bold, italic, whatever you have it all in here. So you can play around with that. You can increase the size, the whole Eight nine thousand. yards. That's way too huge there, Doc. Eight there we go. So we were to play that back. So, oh, now the sound is working. Let me mute that. My bad, people. My bad. I don't have my headphones in, which is really stupid. Yeah, so as you can see, you can go to town with this whole setup. That is a quick run through of DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. And I got to say, the most impressive thing to me is the, the flow, the feel of it, how fast it is, the speed. I'm going to try it out with pairing a mouse because I know not everybody has a pen. Um, it works best on the M-based iPads, but it will work on the like A16, A17 iPads as well. Uh, if you don't know what model you have, um, go into your general settings and and look under model number and it'll tell you what you have and Google it and see what you have. But for a free program, editing on the iPad, it's, it's borderline incredible. Uh, if you have any questions or something you wanna see specifically, let me know. I'm figuring this out at the same time as you, so we'll figure it out together, hey what I'm talking about. That is the video result for the iPad day 14 in the wraps after a super, super long flight with the two and a half hour delay back from Chicago. Now I can go wash that tail and go to bed. I don't know who need to hear this, but if it was you, let me know in the comment section below. And right about now, the algorithm is going to show you another video I think you should watch. And I agree with him. I need to know everything. Who in the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, with five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. Now you'd be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Gotta keep quiet, man.